would get confused when the 33 touches should happen. And if we just say moving forward, hey, three times a month, that's 36. Ta-da! How awesome is that? Okay? The idea here is we want to make this as simple as possible, just like Facebook, just like Google, just like Amazon. So the new 36 touch also has an algorithm. You ready for it? We have to understand this before we start turning it on and start using it. Okay, here's the algorithm. I bet you can figure this one out. Four twenty-six two four. Yep. Four twenty-six two four. It's kind of like Lost. You ever watch that Lost show? Yeah. Yep. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. This is the algorithm of the thirty-six touch, and it's pretty easy. What do you think you need to do with your database four times a year? Call. Oh, wow. Bingo. Four calls a year, quarterly, right? Okay. What do you think you should do with your database 26 times a year? Email. Bingo. Anyone here think 26 emails a year is too much? Good. Because it's not. <laughs> Two. Events. Yep. Client events. Four. Postcards. Cards. What was it? Postcards. Right? Postcards? Yeah. That fits into it? Items. Items of value. Items of value. Items of value is where we put it in there. Okay. Postcards, calendars, Popeyes, whatever that looks like. Pens with your logo on it, just whatever. Okay. Four calls. You have to you have to do that. You don't want to robot calling your database four times a year, do we? No. It's, it's impersonal. Even if Google started calling you or Facebook started calling you, even though they know us, we would feel like it's impersonal. So we have to make those calls. Okay? We'll come back to that. 26 emails, that's a, we turn it on and let it happen. But it's the way we do it that changes things. Okay? Events. Actually, before we do that, here's, no, let's talk about events. What's a client event that you could do by the end of this year? Let's go to lunch. What's that? Go to lunch. Go to, go to lunch. Hour. Oh, happy hour. Okay, so he said go to lunch, go to happy hour. I like happy hour better than lunch. I'm not against lunch, but I want this to be scalable. And going to lunch with all of your database or your clients or sphere of influence or A plus clients, that gets really hard to scale. So happy hour, I really like that. What would it look like if all of a sudden you partnered with your lender partner and said, hey, um, I want to do a happy hour for all my clients, and I'm going to invite everybody to this one watering hole, maybe your favorite pub or tiki bar that you like to be at, and you invite everyone to go, and the first 20 person, people get a drink on you. Okay? Now, I'm not telling you how to spend your money, but this is just an option. Okay? You send out a touch to all of your database, maybe that's one of your four calls and saying, hey, I just wanted to send out like a, a seasonal happy hour for all of my favorite clients. I'm gonna buy the first 20 drinks for all of my clients. Be there at four for a free drink. If you can't be there at four, come hang out with me and have a cocktail anyway. Will people show up if that's your thing? Yeah, absolutely. And here, here's an idea I got from someone else. They said, oh yeah, you can just tell everybody that the first 20 drinks are free and then when the third person gets there, be like, oh, you're number 21, I'm sorry, but thanks, let's go ahead and drink. <laughs> Okay, it's not the right way to do it. <laughs> but I like the thoughts. That's thinking outside the box. Okay, that's a happy hour. What else could you do by the end of the year? Sell pies. What's that? Make, like a big sale. Or big something. sale, pie, like pie giveaway, different things like that. Yeah, we hear about that. Like Santa family photos. Ah, bingo, Christmas is coming. Do people celebrate Christmas on the islands? Like big time? Some do, some don't? Yeah. Do people go take pictures with Santa at like the mall? Right, yes. Which mall? This one? How long is the line to get a picture with Santa? 20 minutes, 30 minutes when hour it comes to peak season? Oh, hour and a half? Wow. What? Okay, is it a good Santa? Nope. Really? <laughs> Crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nope, it's true. Here, here's an idea for you. If he's the best Santa on the island, do this. If he's not, go find the best Santa on the island. Okay? 
go bet, find the best Santa, partner with one of your vendor partners and hire them to come do pictures for four hours just for your clients. Brilliant. Wow. And then you send out a touch to every single one of your database, say, hey, uh, we just hired the best dang Santa on the island. It can be the one at Queen Kumba. Yep, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care what it is, but you call everybody in your database and say, hey, I got the best dang Santa Claus on the island. I've got my photographer here. You just tell me the 10 minute slot over between four to eight on Thursday that you can come by with zero lines. No, no catch. It's just something I do because I care about you. Do you think people will take that? Yeah. And by the way, the people that don't show up, is that still a really valuable call? Yeah. Yeah, and then they show up. Awesome. You can do the same thing for the Easter Bunny. Gets a little creepy sometimes with the Easter Bunny costume, <laughs> but you could. Here's what I need you to hear. It doesn't matter what the client events are. Make them you. Make them something that your clients would care about. And don't make them expensive. You know how much it costs to hire a really good Santa for four hours? Like 500 bucks. And then you get your photographer to come donate his time because he's done 20 shoots for you for the year. Or maybe pay him 200 bucks to shoot all the pictures. And then even give him the option to, to uh, sell a printed package. But everybody gets a digital copy for free of your clients. Whatever that looks like to make it as inexpensive as possible. Can they do that here? Can people reserve the training room here? Yeah. Like you as the agents? Yeah, you do it right here. Invite them to your office. You're reminding them you're in real estate, you're getting in front of them, reserve the training room and just do it right here. Here's an idea, do it with five other realtors. You each have 40 people you want to invite, 10% of them will take you up on the invite, you guys split the costs. Clients are, you're not going to be picking off each other's clients as you walk in, share it, it works. All right. Four client, two client events, four items of value, Anything. You, there's books out there all over for that. I'm not going to talk too much about that. But here's the really fun part. Command, we're going to do it today. We're going to show you how to set up your quarterly call campaign. It's called a smart plan inside of campaign, inside of command. You turn on the quarterly call smart plan, and every quarter, Kelly, our AI, is going to remind you to make phone calls. Awesome. So all you've got to do is actually do it. Then we're going to turn on, write this down, the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. It's a smart plan inside of Camp Command. We're gonna turn it on today, and then you're just, it's gonna be up to you who you add to it. You wanna know who to add to it? Everyone. Everyone. I don't care if they're your mortal enemy, put them on it. Put everyone on your bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. That's a email every other week, thus 26. It's awesome. 42624. So if you use command, is that, for, do you know, um, is that up and running now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then do you know if that's condo, if it works for condo complexes? Yeah, it does. As long as your MLS has condo complexes. Oh, snap. Does your MLS have condos? Yes. Yeah. Does it work if there's no uh, address with the contact? Yeah. You just have to put, tell them which neighborhood you want them to get information on. I'll show you. So, so if they, so like, I think what she's trying to bring out is probably 65% of our clients on the south side and the west side uh -huh. don't live on island. Okay. So we just want to make sure that we can case Send specific them. the complex. Yeah, for sure. Well, you cannot isolate a complex yet. You can isolate the neighborhood that the complex fits into. They get information, bear with me, they get information about it. Once they go into it, then they can drill down to the individual complex. They can't find. Hmm? What? And you get to see whatever they're doing. Why can't we do it? For them? Because we don't have the ability to drill down into a, a complex yet. You're going to get that very soon. And but then, don't wait for it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. and can you tell us when you say the criteria of uh, neighborhood to a complex, how far are they going out? Because some of our complexes are like 20 on the street. It depends. <laughs> it <coughs> yeah, that's a point earlier. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the, the neighborhood boundaries that Nextdoor has. So we partnered with Nextdoor.com because they are the largest database of neighborhoods in, the, in the North America, in the country. And so 
some complexes, condo complexes, are going to fit into one neighborhood. Some of them are going to fit into two neighborhoods. And then you would just put them under two different neighborhoods. Here's the really cool part. Your clients are smarter than you give them credit for. They're totally fine with getting data outside of those complexes as long as they understand how to actually drill it down to the smaller area. Because guess what happens if we don't send them information? Someone else will. Who's it going to be? Zillow. Bottom line. Are our clients going to Zillow? Yes. And do they know how to drill down and figure out how to find their condo on Zillow? Oh, yes. Yeah, they can do it in our system too. So why not just give them a resource every other week reminding them that your website is just as good as Zillow, it's just as inaccurate as Zillow, and they can do anything they want just like they do on Zillow, but now, guess what? They live in your omnipresent world instead of Zillow's. There we go. We're getting it. Are we going to be able to draw our own neighborhood? Would you like to be able to? Yeah. Then yes, you will be able to soon. You can't yet. We can only use the neighborhoods that, that uh, Nextdoor has right now. Your clients can already draw their own neighborhoods. We just can't, we can't draw them yet. The good thing is they can draw them and they can save them. And then go back to their website all the time and get all the information. So they could draw a neighborhood around a high rise and just see that. Well, I was just in Honolulu, that mattered there. Here, you're, you're a condo, oh, yeah. what's that? Some type of community, condo community. You can draw it right around there, save it, and all they have to do is keep going back to the website, and you're sending them emails reminding them that it's there for them. So if command can help you with 30 of the 36 touches, all you have to do, and I say that kind of in jest, is the other six. You, all we have to do is do two events. By the way, our calls can be around those events. And then we just got to come up with four items of value. And by the way, is it OK to do six events and no items of value? Yeah, it's probably better. But items of value, I would probably do like five events and one item of value. One item of value that just kind of stands out to them. Whatever that is, it doesn't really matter. So let command do all of this stuff. With me? Cool. So I told you, like for the first 30 minutes, we weren't even going to touch it. We're like 40 minutes in already, and we haven't touched it. Was this valuable? Yes. Was it good to kind of understand the why behind this? Yes. Okay, good. So open up your computers if you haven't done so already, and log in to agents.kw.com. That's command. I'll write it here. Agents.kw.com. Now before we get into this, I'm a Keller Williams University instructor and we do something at Keller Williams University when we teach classes. We ask for ahas. So for the last 45 minutes or so, we just talked about like omnipresent, the technology, what companies are doing, how we can build Mindshare, more importantly how we can be there when the law of emotional proximity kicks in. We talked about the algorithm. That is our job, capture, connect, or con make them contacts, cultivate them for the follow-up to appointment, and then become a fiduciary for them. And then the algorithm on how to cultivate properly, which is a 36 touch. And by the way, 46 touch is awesome too. I'm not telling you stop at 36 if you want to do more touches. So think about what we've talked about so far. In about 10 seconds, I'm going to ask you for your ahas. So like, what stood out to you? What was that, that moment where you're like, oh, that's a cool way of thinking about it. Or, Whoa, I've never thought about it that way. Or, man, I'm going to do that now. And then, after ahas, I'll open it up to just general questions. I like questions at all times because this is an unfiltered class. What are your ahas? Well, just thinking in terms of the algorithm. Yeah. You know, so that my words for the steps, it helps clarify that's cool. Yeah, I like that. It, just keep it simpler. Yeah. Good. What other ahas? 26 emails. That's been my stickler because I don't like the edge pre done the emails. So I don't even like to send them out. Sure. And guess what? Who's opening them? Nobody. Right. And here's the really cool part does it matter? Not really. Is it, is it helpful to send an email to someone if they never open it? Yes. Get your name, there's no 
Yeah, because they see your name at least, and they're like, oh yeah, he's in real estate, or she's in real estate. That's a good thing. Now, here's the big part, the big difference between command and edge. Is command is going to create a curated email for every single one of your contacts, so that they get an email that's specific to their interests or their communities, instead of the just templated stuff that we had in edge. Now, here's the fun part. Give it a year. This new curated stuff that we're going to be sending is going to feel canned. We're going to always be evolving what those look like and making it feel better. Great aha. I need two more before we really poke on this. I really like the press and the picture with Santa. Not exactly that. Per Nothing se, to do with technology. Yeah, yeah. And how many different directions you could go with that yeah. idea? Good. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, ironically, just the other day, I get a text at 7 in the morning saying, um, so how much does a real estate agent really charge to list a house? And then she ends up being in a divorce situation. You know, had an agent that she used eight times already with her husband and her agent's husband's, her husband's best friend, blah, blah, blah. But I almost still got in. You know, I just gave my value proposition. Good. Gave everything that we are. And, um, and perhaps the next time I can help her, you know, but I, but that just makes me go, if I maybe was always a little more omnipresent, it would have might have got her before. I might have got it way before this even happened. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great segue. So before I open up for questions, I need to talk about this really quickly. Because Gary and Josh and the team have built this command system with AI in the back, all of a sudden, you can start taking advantage of those, these insights that I kind of led on to earlier. Here's the fun part. Because you put your database into command, because Kelly can analyze your database, and Kelly knows a lot about your database, like where they live, where they work, maybe how old they are, when their date of birth is, all sorts of different stuff that you give Kelly access to by putting it into command, you're going to be, well, you're not going to be surprised, because I'm telling you right now, in about six to nine months, Kelly will, pro will be able to provide you an insight. And one day, all of a sudden, you'll get an insight from Kelly. And it'll be like a notification on your app, or when you log in, it'll be a thing to do for the day, right on your home screen. And it's gonna say, hey, it's time for you to call Nikki. There's a 70% chance she's getting divorced in the next 60 days. Mm -hmm. Why well, you sit on that for a second? Okay? And then the next day, you're going to get another call. Hey, it's time for you to call these three people. We believe there's a 67% chance there's going to be a teenage pregnancy in their house. <laughs> I want this one out and bought the test. Oh, target. Should that target be the phone somewhere. call? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and guess what? The phone call shouldn't be. Hey, Nikki, I think you're going to get divorced in the next 60 days. No. Time to buy a bigger house. Here's what I don't want you to hear. Kelly's never going to tell you why to call someone. Right. Kelly's going to say something like this. You should call these six people because we think they may need a realtor soon. And you shouldn't say, we think you need a realtor soon. My algorithm says you're ready. No. It's going to be something like this. Hey, Nikki, it's Zach. I haven't talked to you in ages. How's everything going? Yeah, it's all going ahead, Zach. Okay, well, hey, um, I just wanted to reach out to you, was thinking about you, and uh, uh, I got a lot of clients in your area that have been asking about real estate a lot, and I know you're probably not looking to buy or sell right now. However, will you just do me a real solid and think of me when, if you ever have any real estate needs in the upcoming future? Yeah, hey, good hearing from you, Zach. Awesome, Nikki, thank you so much for taking my call. I don't want to take any more of your time. Click. Now, when she has a fight with her husband the next night and they think about selling their house, what's the likeliness that she calls you first now instead? Like significantly higher. So we're never going to tell you why you need to call people, but it will be based on insights, based on things like, Maybe we know what company they work at because you told the system what company they work at. And that company is getting a massive IPO and everybody's going to get some big, huge settlements that work there. Not settlements, but payouts. Good for us to know, right? Now, if we're really in our database, we're going to be on top of that. But let's be honest, how many of us know the 80% of our clients 
when their companies are laying people off. So now all of a sudden Kelly says, hey, call this person. There's an 87% chance they're getting fired next week. <coughs> it's scary. <coughs> this is not the sneeze at. <laughs> but here's the, here's the underlying part. If you don't put your database into a system that can actually cross-reference and analyze and, and use AI to start looking for insights and then serve you those insights and reach out to the right people at the right time, then you're doing your clients a disservice. Now that's weird, and I know that got a little funky, but what I said was if you don't use a system like command, you're giving your clients a disservice. What I mean by that is if you don't know that your clients are getting terminated next week, someone else might. Do you think Zillow is paying attention to this kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Yes. What happens if Zillow starts reaching out to Nikki because they know there's a 60% chance that she's going to have a divorce? Does Zillow have a fiduciary to protect, to put Nikki's interests ahead of Zillow's? No. No, they don't. In fact, can Zillow actually underpay for the house and screw over Nikki and have no skin on the game? And, and Nikki will be underrepresented? So it is our fiduciary duty to our clients to help protect them from companies like Opendoor, Zillow, or these, companies, these tech companies that are trying to get deeper and deeper to our clients. So that's an interesting statement you just made. So are you saying iBuyer, uh, being an agent who has an iBuyer program, would be a fiduciary irresponsible trait to it? No, because you're a realtor with an iBuyer program. You have a fiduciary duty to put your client's needs ahead of their own, your own. So if you, as a realtor that has an iBuyer program, went to your clients and said, look, we can list your home, it'll take 90 days to sell, and this is the price you'll probably get, you're going to end up with 100 showings, four open houses, and it'll be a little inconvenient. Or I, my company can buy your house for $30,000 $30, less, $3 million less, but we'll close in three days, and you don't have to show a thing. Are you still being a fiduciary there? Yeah. Yeah. Where the, where the disconnect is is when a realtor's not there, there's no fiduciary in the conversation, and all of a sudden their only option is that option. And that's their only option. That's where it gets really fuzzy and fair and hairy. With me? Yeah. Cool. So we all understand why. Now what? Okay. Anybody having troubles getting here? I had a trouble going into agent.com. It said um, agent.aw.com. I mean, yeah, it kept saying uh, not. Um, Are you using Google Chrome? No. Use Google Chrome. So I just went in through through Connect. I'm in command, but I didn't. You're in. Okay, good. But I'm in. So good. So you're, yeah. but you're using but Safari. Have, yeah. Can you do me a huge favor and use Chrome? Chrome? Okay. It, everything just works better with Chrome. I like Safari too, but Chrome just works better. Okay. When you get in here, you've got your entire command dashboard, your home screen. Here's what I need you to hear or see with this. This is your iPhone for your real estate business. When I say iPhone, smartphone, okay? By a show of hands, who has iPhones here? Good, the majority of the room. Android, hi, proud. Cool, yep. <laughs> I'm an Apple user, so Android users, get ready, you're gonna hear something Apple users never say. Android phones are better. You're welcome. Why is it that so many people have Apple then? Mindshare. Mindshare, marketing. Ease of, use. Yeah, it's ease of use. It's the platform. Yeah. Yep. Apple made the platform first, which means it's really hard to get out of the platform once you're in it. It's the same reason people don't go to Alibaba once they started using Amazon. Also, Apple's system just works all the time. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter if you have Android or iPhone, this is your smartphone for your real estate business. Yes, so, so we're going to uh, the recommendation is always to use Chrome. Yes. Okay, thank you. I would, yes. Always use Chrome. Moving forward with really everything. Yeah. Yeah. So if this is your smartphone for your business, then what's on the left hand side there? What do you think those are called? Apps. Bingo. Yeah, we call them applets because of trademark thing. Okay? <laughs> they're applets. But they're apps. They're just like apps on your phone. Now, here's the fun part. You guys have apps on your phones. 
Anybody want to care to admit how many apps you have on your phone? <laughs> no, can't. Count. Would you guys agree you have more apps than you use? Yes. yes. Did you know you can go into your settings and actually pull up the number of apps that you have on your phone? Yes. Last time I checked, I had 493. Oh wow. my god. You probably have over 400, so don't be giving me this feedback. <laughs> no. Okay. Now some of you don't. You're like 30. <laughs> probably not. Okay. <laughs> Here's what we know. Do you use the same 20 apps 80% of the time? Yes. yes. Sound familiar? It's the 80-20 principle. It shows up everywhere, okay? The command platform is the same. You have all these apps over on the left-hand side, more apps than you're probably ever gonna use. What you need to know is which apps you need to focus on first. Here's the best way I can explain it. Make this super simple for you. When you got your iPhone, you started using it. And you started using it a lot. Anybody here not have a smartphone? Does this phone make sense to you? Okay, good. When you got your iPhone, you have all these apps on it. And you did what? There was the first app that every single one of you used. You ready for this? I, you all know it. Doesn't matter if you're Android or iPhone. What is it? Phone. It's the phone app. It's the first app we all started using on our iPhone. I'm just going to say iPhone from now on. Android users, I'm sorry. But the majority of your iPhone, okay? Then on your iPhone, you started using maybe this one. Mail. Mail. Voice mail. mail. Oh, yeah, mail. voicemail, messages, mail, it's messaging, okay? Then this one, that's where you could go on and like search anything at any time. Yes. Google. Google, yeah, Chrome, Safari, it's your, it's your internet browser. I heard someone say Maps, that's absolutely the next one. Anyone here use Maps more than they like to admit? Yeah, like we're completely reliant on these maps nowadays, aren't we? I love Google Maps. What about settings? Settings? Contacts. I don't know that much. Contacts are in your phone. Yeah, contacts are right here. How about this one? Ooh, this one is revolutionary. Changed our world. Martini time. No. <laughs> Flashlight. <laughs> It's a flashlight app. Now, here, here's, here's a new slash for you. This one app got more baby boomers to switch over to smartphones than any other app out there. Yes. Yep. They, they, they were at a restaurant and they were like, I don't even you know, smartphones are for the birds. I'm never going to use it. I don't want it. And then they were at a restaurant once and they looked over at the table next to them and someone pulled out the flashlight and they were reading the menu. And they were like, I need one of those. And they bought a smartphone. And they were like, I need a flashlight in my pocket at all times. And that literally is what people bought smartphones over it. I'm not saying that you're the one, but chances are it may have been a part of why you got a phone. Okay? Then there's another app. You ready for it? Anyone use that one a little bit? All the time, right? And then one last one. It's Instagram or just your camera in general. Anybody, any, did I miss any? Exactly, like that's it. We have like 300 apps on our phones and these are like the only ones we use. Now here's the really fun part. I love this, okay? It's really important. I read this on the internet, which means it has to be true. Did you know that the smartphones in our pockets, these supercomputers, are a thousand times more powerful than the supercomputer that was on the space shuttle that first landed on the moon? Wow. Now, I told you I read it on the internet, so I have no idea how true that is, but it's probably pretty accurate. It may even be 10,000 times more accurate. Now, you may be sitting there like, we never went to the moon, whatever, okay. <laughs> You've got a supercomputer in your pocket, okay? You, on average, look at this thing 150 times a day. Have any of you, be honest, left your cell phone, your smartphone, at the dinner table at a restaurant before? Yep. What happened? Chaos. Panic. Yes. Like full on hyperventilating until you had your phone back in your pocket. Like and those of you that never left a phone behind before, maybe you put it in a different pocket. Like you put your phone in a different pocket and all of a sudden 10 minutes later you're like, where is it? And then you spend 30 minutes looking for it until you find it in your back pocket. Yeah. It's better when you're looking for it while you're Or when you're talking on it. Or your glasses that are on your head. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is funny for some of you in this room because you might have been here when I got out of my Uber and my phone was still in my Uber. About two hours ago. Panic. 
She was like, she was like, hi Zach. I was like, don't talk to me. I need to get, I need to log into Uber right now. Wasn't I? Oh, dude. I was like, I need my phone right now. I was like digging it. He was driving away. I was yelling at him. <laughs> Ten minutes took me to get my phone back. Full on anxiety. I was watching my phone, my computer, tracking my phone coming back. Even after he called and said he's coming back, I was still tracking him and updating him, looking out the window trying to find him. Panic. Now. We are completely reliant on these smartphones, these supercomputers in our pockets. By a show of hands, how many of you ever took a class to learn how to use it? One. <laughs> Ironically, you didn't actually take a class to learn how to use it, you took a class to learn how to use it better. <laughs> She's like, no, I actually took a class to learn how to use it. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me go here. Facebook. Anybody spend a bit of time on Facebook? Probably more than they'd like to admit. It's a platform. We're super users. Like, we are experts on Facebook. Anybody take a class to learn how to use Facebook? <laughs> no? I figured you'd be the same. No? OK, good. So hold on. How did you learn how to use your iPhone? Or how did you learn how to use Facebook then? Try on there. Try yeah. yeah. Same thing. Here's what happened. You got your iPhone, and you started using this app. And then you started using this app. And then you started using this one. And then you stopped using this one as much, and you kept using this one. And then you use this one, like daily. And then you use this one, and then you stop using this one, and you move to this one. Here's what I know. When you got your supercomputer and you pulled it out of the box, if there would have been a message in there that said, these are the 100 apps that you're going to have on your phone in a week, and you need to know everything that they do, you would have had an anxiety attack, and you probably would have vomited, put the box back together, and returned it. The way we learn how to use command is the same way we learn how to use our smartphone. You gotta do it one little bit at a time. You gotta play with it, you gotta use it. Same way you use Facebook. How'd you learn? You start by commenting. Then you like to post. And then you post yourself. And then you poke someone, and then you're like, that's weird, I'm never poking someone again. <laughs> and then you send a direct message, and then you went live. Okay? You didn't start learning how to do it all at the same time. You did it little by little by little. Command is the same thing. And the little thing that I need you to do first is get all of your contacts in a command. I can't do this for you, and we can't do it today. But you have to get your contacts in a command. Write this down. Hi, Sig. HiSync is the company that Gary Keller went out and hired to help you get all your contacts into command. It's in your settings inside of command. You can actually sync up all the contacts in your iPhone right to command. I love that. You can go, and your users are Google contacts. Same. It's all free. When I add somebody to my iPhone, three minutes later, they're in command. When I add somebody to command, they're in my iPhone three minutes later. Awesome. By the way, that's just this. It's taking someone from capturing their information to creating the contact. Does it also uh, uh, take 